An activist is really anybody who's passionate about a specific subject and they take action towards that subject to make positive change. We talk about her, we learned from her, we honor her in our own way, but the work is far beyond anything to do with her. But I think she would be proud of the work itself. In August 2017, Charlottesville resident Heather Heyer lost her life when a car plowed into a crowd of counter demonstrators who were protesting a white nationalist and neo-Nazi rally. Later that year, her mother and her friend and supervisor co-founded a nonprofit organization in her honor to promote social justice and community unity. Join us as we visit with Susan Bro and Alfred Wilson of the Heather Heyer Foundation. Come on. She was constantly teaching me things and opening my eyes about my environment, making me aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And to be able to inspire or to help other young people keep that going was something that we said, okay, this is what we're going to basically do here. We're going to establish that and have that move forward. She was definitely a Gemini. She was fiercely tenderhearted, fiercely feisty extremely stubborn her entire life. We always said she was over the top, and of course Heather would go out with a bang as well um, because she was just so over the top. Well, and following her death, there was a tremendous outpouring of emotional support and financial support. And so that was part of the inspiration for starting the foundation, right? Talk about that. Well, for me, that was, um, probably the biggest push to go ahead and just do something because I always knew I wanted to do something to honor her. I didn't know if that was going to be a flower garden at home or if it was going to be something public. But cash was pouring in, or checks, money was pouring in through the post office, general delivery, through um, the mayor's office, through the funeral home, churches, uh, TV stations, I mean, little, yeah. uh, you know, small donations, but they added up. And I contacted Alfred immediately and said, can you help me set up something? But that had to be a difficult decision for you. It was a necessary decision because of the funds coming in, but you've, you've made this decision to have this foundation. And so you have to relive this over and over again. That that could not be an easy thing to do. Um, it's not really been an option to walk away. I can't hardly watch anything on TV um, or the news or um, hardly even look at a, a newspaper or read a book or anything, but what somehow Charlottesville is gonna come up and then they're gonna mention this 32 year old person. Right. My, my other child refuses to watch TV anymore. They don't even go on social media. But still here you are doing all of this work. Let's talk about the work. So what is the mission of the foundation? What is it you want to achieve? I like to say that we are supporting the empowerment and education of the next generation or the next round, however you want to say it, of activists, advocates, and allies. We're looking at people who are already showing that they are activists and they want to continue their education or their training, perhaps even practical hands-on training in how to be an activist, how to be an advocate, how to be an ally. Right. We're not trying to create people who never were activists. We're just saying, if you're interested in activism, we're interested in helping you. Yeah, and peaceful activism. That's, peaceful. That's, peaceful that is your... Key. You, that comes up every time that you speak. Mm -hmm. Peaceful, nonviolent, positive solutions. I understand that those won't always work for everybody, but you have to make a choice which, which way you're going to battle things. And this is what Heather advocated. Mm -hmm. This is what I have always advocated. Um, I'm going to stick with this. <laughs> And yeah. Alfred, talk about the role that you've played from the beginning and continue to play in the organization. Well, from the, from the beginning of the organization, it was just helping us to establish it. I mean, to sit, listen to Susan that day call, Alfred, we got to do something. I have to do something. And I said, okay, let's set up a foundation. Let's give out scholarships. Let's keep her memory going. Um, she, like I said, she loved, it seems like 
educating or learning things, I should say. She didn't like school as much, but she loved learning things and she liked teaching people things. Yeah. So our foundation, yes, we're going to keep, unfortunately, Susan's every year when she goes to hand that out, it's going to have to sit there and embrace and hug each one of those new recipients. And, of the scholarships. Yes. Right. She'll hand out those scholarships to each one of those new recipients and give a part of her to them to ask them to keep carrying Heather's memory on. And I like seeing that part of Susan when she does that and to see those young people look at her and then I know that we're doing a good thing because I know the little things that Heather did with inspiring my kids. You know, my kids loved hanging out with her. So here, here's Heather's inspiration still going. She was just such a fun spirit. Um, would always crack jokes with us when we'd come in. She was just always fun to have around. I think people are um, starting to speak out a lot more and I don't want people to be discouraged by um, events like Charlottesville. Um, so I'm hoping this program will help support other people and kind of give them that confidence again to get back out there and be activists. So the scholarships, let's talk about those more in depth. So they go to high school kids, they go to college kids too, right? Right. And give me examples of what those would be. Oh, some of it is community, community work. Mm -hmm. uh, education, education, legal, so if you're paralegal. paralegal. Right, because that's, that's what she was doing with you. Social her. work. Social work, right. anyone going into the field of law. But I also like any teachers because Susan was a teacher. And right. teachers do an amazing job with forming our youth's minds. So we're looking at those type of individuals. Those right. individuals are, I mean, they're really great, great kids to move forward. That's great. And then tell us about the um, Higher Voice program, your goals and hopes for this program. This is pretty special. We went to, oh gosh, Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl. Yeah. We rode in the parade. We went to the Rose Bowl parade a couple years back. And during that, we were having our own little mini youth summit, I guess you can say, with the recipients of those awards at that time. And it's supposed to be basically a program that we're allowing the youth with their thoughts, their um, plans, any type of goals that they may have, we're gonna help fund and help finance those type of things for them. We're also gonna be training them to make sure that they're going through the proper steps with their social activism and give them a little more skills out of it. I think one of the things that I've heard Susan talk about doing is also working with these same kids and making sure they're doing well with the essay writing. One of the things the mentors will also do is to help um, the kids focus as they go through their project. Am I going for my end goal? Has my goal changed? It's very easy to get excited when you're um, doing projects it's harder to stay focused on where that project is going sure. and does everything sure. head towards that end goal. Well, and you, you travel quite a bit. You travel quite a bit. You are asked to come and speak for a lot of different organizations. Almost every talk I've heard you give, you talk about the importance of having difficult conversations if we want to move forward in a, in a peaceful and positive way. Uh, we see the value in having conversations with people that maybe you'd rather not talk to. This was actually a model that was often used by Heather. In fact, on the day she was murdered, um, she was talking to one of the young women in the parking lot as they were packing up to leave. And she was on film seen saying, can you talk to me about why you believe this way? What bothers you about black and brown people? and just trying to engage the girl in some sort of conversation in a gentle, positive manner. I've seen her do this myself many times, almost like she's willing to accept whatever the person says. And I guess she would have been, really, because she then takes what you say and tries to move you a little step beyond, a little step beyond. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that Heather inspired you to do, is have difficult conversations. Um, soon after um, the, the rally had taken place in Heather's home, murder had taken place, there was a concert held, and my daughter had a tire that ended up getting flat, and we had a tow truck that driver that had to come pick it up. In the tow truck, he had his rebel flag there, and then here it is late night, and we're going down this dark road, and I'm sitting there quietly thinking, okay, I'm gonna ride 45 minutes quietly, not say anything to this guy, because I've already noticed we probably don't have anything in common. 
But then, again, that little tap on my shoulder <laughs> tapped me and said, you need to open up your mouth and talk to this guy. Mm -hmm. And so I opened up and started talking to him. I started having a difficult conversation, asked him about his flag, told him about my life and my three children, and found out he had three children, found out that he's working extra shifts to try to put them through college. I'm working extra shifts to try to put mine through college, and I was explaining him the same thing. Weeks later, you know, I ended up chatting with him again, and he let me know he took his flag down. Yes. So having that difficult conversation with him made him think, okay, we do have some things in common, and it's uncomfortable. I, I'll admit it's really uncomfortable sometimes having these conversations. It's that I want you to listen. I want you to understand. I want you to see, yes, I am who I am, but I also want you to realize and learn who I am. And where would you like to see the foundation go? What are your hopes for the future? I want it to be a place for people to feel like they can come and learn about justice and equity, learn how to do peaceful, nonviolent, positive change. I want it to be a resource in addition to being a scholarship foundation. Because Heather loved to educate herself and make sure that people had knowledge, I would love one day for our foundation to grow and where we will be able to pay a full tuition for um, several kids to go through school. I mean, I just think her, edu her, her desire to educate or keep people's knowledge or keep people awake, so the word, keep people awake, is just inspiring to me. That is great. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, it really makes me um, proud of all the work that my dad and Susan are doing in um, Charlottesville. It's just, you know, it's been a hard past two years for the community, but they're really helping them get through it, and I just really wanted to be a part of it as well.